Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So in this game, I'll be playing Are You Ninja, a fellow old timer as well. So let's get started. So after d4, knight c6, c4, e5. So for me, this is a blitz opening. I like to play it because everything for me comes on the king side. So Eventually, I'll start piling up on the king side, and it'll start to look like a king's Indian. So, instead, I thought that usually most people play d5, but e3 works as well. And after d6, I invited our are you ninja to play d5. It was played, and after knight c7, knight c3, f5, e4 was played. So essentially, instead of playing e3, just play d5. Small tip. After f5, e4, knight f6, and bishop g5. Now, um, I have no idea what the main line is here. I'm not even sure if there is a line. But I play this in blitz just... So that, you know, my knights are all in very interesting positions. One is guarding f5, and the other is looking towards e4. So, obviously, it's a little bit cramped for the bishop. But after bishop g5, this is a good move. Because, number one, it prevents me from playing g6 and bishop g7. And, number two, it sort of creates this very invisible pin on the knights and the queen. After knight takes e4, knight takes e4, pawn takes e4, now our Aryu Ninja plays the move queen h5 check. And at this point, I believe white can still get back the e4 pawn through knight e2 and knight g3. But, um, I mean, white could also play g3, bishop g2, knight e2, knight c3. It really depends. I think I like white's position here. So instead, white played queen h5 check. This was another one of those interesting moves that I thought was, in, was admirable. But apparently the computer doesn't like it. I don't know. After g6, queen h4, and I played the move bishop g7. Now, I briefly considered the move bishop f5 holding on to this pawn. However, the move bishop f6 to move this rook is just too devastating. I couldn't allow that, so I played bishop g7. And after knight e2, this is a good move, right? Just not directly taking the pawn just yet, waiting to come pile on so that the knight comes at a better square. Good thinking. So after h6, however, now is not the time to trade. Think about it like this. This knight, he has maybe a future on f5, but... This bishop, if you place it on e3, there is much more potential in the position for this bishop than there is for this knight. The knight will go here and maybe here, but, but the bishop can even neutralize him there. Now, you could say that, okay... The knight's going to hop to f5. The knight's going to hop to d4. It's going to be a really good knight, right? Well, yeah, but in the current position, you can think of it as the bishop is pinning the knight and the queen. And knowing that, the queen has to, if I don't want to trade this queen with this queen, I'm going to have to move out first and then move the knight. And that's going to take a while. But by playing bishop takes e7, this gives me the time to develop it. 
Now, our unit ninja decides to queen trade instead of here and bishop f5. So instead, queen trade occurs, king takes, and now h3. And at first, this is a very, it by the looks of it, it's a very well-intentioned move. One, after bishop f5, the goal is g4 and bishop g2 and get the pawn back. However, there is a way to, for black to preserve the pawn. And that is with the move h5, just simply preventing g4. And after knight c3, bishop f5 occurs. Now at this point, white should consider the move g3 and follow that up with bishop g2. However, that's a, that's a very hard idea to spot because it's not very obvious that, you know, white wants to get the pawn back, right? It's a, it's a doubled pawn and there's not much in the position to really say that this pawn means much. Like white could castle and play rookie one. And then you could say that, okay, this pawn is going to fall anyways, right? But in addition to playing h5, this bishop gets a route of entry. And that's going to lead me to keep that pawn. So after bishop e2, I play the move h4 because I prevent the move g4 with ampassant. If you don't know what ampassant is, it essentially means that, okay, these two have, the two people have not made contact yet. And essentially, when white plays g4, White is refusing to talk to the black pawn. So white is not a social creature and says, I don't want to talk to you, but think of the black pawn as a demon. And the demon is going to be like, yes, I'm going to forcibly remember to talk to you. So after h4, bishop d1, very good, very well intentioned with bishop c2. However, I bet you bishop h6 was the move you might have missed. So after bishop c2, I play e3, bishop takes f5, and at this point I can consider both e takes f2, or I can consider the move g takes f5. And now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I should have played e takes f2, because after king takes f2, g takes f5. This is going to allow me this file and press on the f file. So I'll stop here for a thought and thank you for listening.